conspires who are women, women who are setting records, women who are achieving milestones, even with the little space given to us. Who do I have with me as a guest in the studio? Well, that's for you to sit back and relax while I get my guests introduced. For now, I'll take a short break and I'll be right back. Don't go away. I don't think in gender boxes at all. I just get on with it. A man that would dare to ask the wife, who do you think you are? Dad is a real man. In fact, our husbands are our firstborns. The husband needs more attention than even the children. It's not only about work, it's not only about family. They need to take the time to look after themselves. And we don't, we don't do that. They took my money, I paid every fees. I never asked to be hoisted as a governor. I wanted to be allowed to go out there and contest for the position of uh, uh, governorship candidate first. There's nothing greater than looking back and seeing that while you were aspiring, you were able to inspire others. Empower to women. Yes. We need to others. have more women, more multitaskers around Nigeria to get Nigeria working. Definitely. If you're just joining us, the program is The Woman and you're right on time. My name is Elizabeth Abana. I told you I have a woman you can wait to watch. She is not just a politician. She's not just uh, uh, an activist. She, she's not just um, a woman who sets the record and makes good at getting it. She is the boss of the Nigerian Pass Authority. Join me as I welcome Hadi Zabala. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, I was saying off record, and um, you didn't want me to shout it, but somehow I like to shout. You're so pretty. <laughs> Prettier than what camera so. does. <laughs> you know, better than what I see on camera, really. And it's, you're, being, you're being generous. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm being real. I don't Thank think you. I've uh, done much of that compl compliment to a lot of people who come and sit here with me. Thank but you. I'm glad I'm doing it. Anyway. Thank you. It's God's gift, so we praise him for that. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on the program. Now, in 2016, precisely July, your name came on board, and um, with all controversies and every other thing joined together, you emerged as a managing director of Nigerian Post Authority. Were you, were you not daunted, you know? Were you scared? I mean, if they told me I'm going to do that now, <laughs> I'll tell them, hang on, hang on, I'm not sure I'm, not, I'm ready. <laughs> tell me, how was the mind for you? Because that's a huge um, position for yeah, a woman. I, and I guess maybe fear and being scared is not in my dictionary. Naturally, I'm very, like, very, very bold and confident person. So I, at that point, all I kept focusing on is, oh, I need to understand the sector. I need to, you know, get my head in and know what it is that, that, that I need to know and how I need to get this job done. And I also then focus on reading all of these things that have been said about me. Um, that way, it wouldn't distract me. Okay. So I wouldn't allow, like, you know, read every other article and all of it. I, I didn't do that. I was just um, spending my time reading what I needed to do in, in terms of getting my work done. You know, you just gave me something I never really thought about. You know, a lot of people will get to negative criticism mm -hmm. and, you know, they, and I get to them. And that's mm -hmm. because they actually yeah. pay in mind yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'll pick that and yeah. I'll put it right Don't back. focus yeah. on it. Um, exactly. You can make it your strength and to prove people wrong. Because just, people always talk. Yeah. So you pick, you can see one or two things where people might say, oh, she's a girl, she's too young, she doesn't know the sector. And with that in your mind, you now, it will be your, your strength to say, I'm going to prove all of you wrong that I can do it. But don't, oh, you know, over get d deep into that and allow it to, 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 to get into your head. That's cool. Now, you just mentioned that uh, for that sector, you were not um, a, a particularly green, but then you were in a, a, a pro <laughs> when you joined. Yes. But amazingly, you've done so well. Mm -hmm. What is the secret? Um, it's, it's reading, understanding, and um, hard work. It's a lot of work. Um, putting your all your 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 mind to it, um, understanding that it's a huge responsibility you have, and knowing that it's an opportunity that has to be given to you, and how you perform determines what happens to the next woman being given such a job. So you're you're carrying the weight of not just your own self, but also of a, a certain generation, a certain gender. So that really you know makes you 
um, um, push forward and, and take on um, the responsibility of getting things done. Now, I was trying to get through things you've done. There are a whole lot of them, <laughs> but I found one particularly interesting. Mm. The one you did for the women. Share it with me. <laughs> the, you know, women say oh, you're not single. Or, yes, they had yeah. a, yeah, we I inherited a policy where um, you, you're only entitled to maternity leave if you're married. And I found that ridiculous because childbearing and childbirth have nothing to do with your matrimonial status. Mm -hmm. A child is a child. You breastfeed a child irrespective of your... So it's really not an organization's business to hold your uh, maternity leave because of a marital status. I think um, that is wrong. So um, I changed that policy. I also um, bent over backwards to accommodate women in our time of need in childbearing so some of the policies were you can't take a your annual leave with your maternity leave i said no we should be allowed to do that and <laughs> and also to 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 give us the maximum um, amount of days approved by the federal government nigerian ports has the maximum i think in ensuring women stay in um, appointment women stay employed in is to allow them have those um, windows I think you know when you're in a childbearing age you usually uh, so uh, you, you're, you're quick to resign your job because um, your baby is sick you have vaccination you don't have a nanny um, you know so all of these things I feel it's our duty um, some of us are find ourselves in a position of authority to ensure that policies are put in place to accommodate um, the young women that are in employment and also Personally, um, even beyond the policy positions, if you are in, you have your supervisor, and a young girl has a baby, or my child has a fever from immunization, you should be gracious enough as a person to allow them that leeway because that is what um, if you know the statistics women get into employment we start at the same numbers as the men but we tend to drop out so after maybe five years when you start having kids and then you're like i really can't cope so we drop out so by the time we get to executive positions there are no pool of women available to be promoted to that position so being able to keep the young girl in employment up until when she gets to the place where she becomes an executive into a management position that is an integral part of um, um, the career of a woman so we need to find ways where we can ensure uh, we remain in employment because usually you know we need to have support of ex uh, extended family we need to um, have support of our spouses to keep us um, in that place so I personally try to see what I can do as much as possible to, 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 to give those windows beyond even what is official but to personally talk to them and oh you can close early today it's okay just send me the report you can email it to me so you know as women we should just try to do that at yeah. all times yes you know you're speaking and I'm thinking why well, would all bosses just be women <laughs> and women like Hadiza? <laughs> well, I'm a taskmaster also. Uh, no, 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 you just said something that I kind of like. Yes. You know, why don't you email it to me? I mean, yes. we're in a digital era. Yes, some bosses will insist that you must be there like yes. two, four, yes, if it's possible. Yes. You know, but I, I think it shouldn't always be like that. There yes. are some things you can, you know, do at home, mm -hmm. you know, write and email your boss. Mm. It's really okay yeah. once the job is done. Yes, and if you, you have know? a like a problem, your child isn't well, or you're heavily, if you have those circumstances you explain to your boss they should be able to understand it doesn't happen every day it doesn't have all the time but we should recognize those errors and allow us to, to, to allow us as women to, to sort of you know you know as you speak just this morning I got a call a young girl died oh you know because she had to work mm. up until a couple of hours before she went into labor oh and the question was why didn't you take a leave and she said no because um, she said no because she is going to have to you know forfeit leave after birth. I don't know. I don't know. This should actually be looked into. But thank you for that. Now, as a woman working in a male-dominated sector, I drop my heart for you. But I'd like to share. How do you manage the intel, all the problems that go on around there? How do you cope? Um, I think I become, I'll say, maybe gender blind. I just do what I need to do. My last job before being managing director of Nigerian Post, I was chief of staff to Kaduna State Governor. And in fact, that is more so a job that is not being seen for a woman. So from that point, I sort of um, just 
do what I need to do and um, refuse to allow that gender bias or gender conversation. What I do cannot be reduced to my gender, focus on the work I do and we'll, we'll overcome that. So after a while, you at the beginning, you see some level of pushback where people don't recognize your authority because you're a woman. But when you're steadfast and you remain firm, you remain with the level of authority required, they would, after a while, recognize that, oh, she's not a pushover, you know, I can just um, speak to her anyhow, I can just get away with it and that um, sort of, you know, um, becomes the accepted thing. And on our side as women, we also need to be firm, you know, um, convey your authority without being hysterical, convey, um, ensure that you have your dignity in the opposition you occupy, um, reduce over-socializing to um, allow that avenue where people can disrespect you or people can have um, over-social conversation in a workspace. I think we need to De emphasize that yes. so that you are more um, focused and serious and in certain instances when people crack jokes that you know are unacceptable you the way you comport yourself with them they would realize that um, such manner of exchange are not acceptable to you mm -hmm. without you being hysterical or having a meltdown but the way you respond will make them realize that you know this is a no-nonsense environment it's a no-nonsense person let's get the job done we're here to work we're not here to socialize you're my colleague you're not my friend you know and be firm about it so mm -hmm. on our side as women there's also a way we need to um, compose and conduct ourselves to elicit that um, respect that respect we we, we we expect and that um, I think is important and once you establish it one two times everybody falls in place um, you um, for that too people would now say, oh, she doesn't joke around. So no one would come to you with, with, with those manners of joke because you've established in that your work environment that you're not that um, lady that wants to laugh around with everybody or, or, or you know, over fraternize where it's not required. You know, Hadiza, if somebody was talking to me about you, I wouldn't want to call names now. Yeah. And the person said you came in with two portfolios, mm -hmm. the portfolio of a mother and woman <laughs> and the portfolio of um, the principal, the, head, the school administrator, <laughs> yes. you know. So you have the carrot and you have the cane. Yes. And it's worked well for yes. you. Yes. But then all your policies you've been able to um, create and implement, tell mm -hmm. me, which of them do you look at and you go, ah, this is where the Aruka <laughs> feeling fits in? Well, it's more about, for me, entrenching transparency and accountability and mm -hmm. calling people to book and saying that oh you know you can't you're not complying to this regulation government requires that of you so for me that really gives me that sense of satisfaction making people uh, you know if he that too you felt you could treat government you're not scared of stepping on toes ah well I'm not scared like I said fear and being scared is not in my dictionary so I really don't even realize that um, I'm stepping on toes I and I'm also blind to people's names and positions of authority, I look at the um, company or the entity and I see, are you doing what is required? And I say, you, you should do it without trying to say, oh, um, ma remove the masquerade and see who's behind it. I don't want to know who is behind it. X company is not complying. We, we ensure that it does. Um, and if everybody refuses to allow themselves to be, um, or maybe intimidated by, oh, this is the person behind it, would actually um, get more things done. So I get a lot of uh, pleasure from that, because that, that's one of the things that I feel, you know, happy about. And also, um, Nigerian ports, it, it seemed to be an era where there's a lot of money, a lot of, you know, so there's huge opportunities for rent seeking. So I say, um, not everybody has a price. I don't have a price. You can't bribe me. So that's something that I that's hold a good one. very you can't dear. can't bribe me. Yes. Um, yes. People, you know, th that notion that everyone has a price. We have, there's so much money we can give to, to, to make you sort of bend the rules, accommodate. And I take um, pride in that, that, you know, we don't have a prize here. Not anymore. And then John Potts and their stuff, we, I refuse to allow that. And Are you I'm listening? not going to... Um, permit that and I personally don't have a price yeah you, are you telling us <laughs> I, I followed you from the days I think 2014 uh, when you were you know right with uh, bring, back our girls. bring back our girls yes. you generated a red color yes, yes I did what was the reason behind that um I felt it was a red flag we needed to um, 
show the world that um, it's the red, you know, we highlight that and, and bring the attention. Yes, so it's something that um, I hold dear because um, the Bring Back Our Girls campaign is an important thing for young girls, girls in ch girl child education, ensuring our girls stay in school because abduction of a girl in school makes parents not want to take their children to school anymore. So it's, it is a, a very important thing for, for the girl child education. You talk about girl child, I know you have two boys. Yes, I do. <laughs> so with all your movements, I, I mean, you know I've been following you for the past two months and I know when you fly out, yes, I know when you come yes. in. How do you cope? It's you know, tough. Being a mother to yes, them. Yes, it's very hard. Um, um, I have to balance and make sure that um, I'm home um, in time. And once I'm home, I give them my attention. Um, I always, I we go, uh, I take them to school every morning, drop them off and then go to work. Okay, you take them yourself. <laughs> yes, I take them to school. I don't like drivers doing that. Uh, yes, so like on my it. way to school, to the office, we go together and I take them. And, you know, it as you know it's it's quite important i didn't realize how much because i think it's important but i've come to see how much it matters to them you know even if it is 10 minutes you stay with them in the car it, it is important and then i make sure i close by five thirty six. so by six o'clock i'm at home and i also don't bring work in terms of physical work people home i don't allow um people to come to meet with me at home. I don't allow that. So my home is my sanctuary, is where I'm me. I don't um, allow oh, people from my office, to, my work to come into my home. I do my paperwork at home all the time. I take home work, which I call mommy's homework, but I don't allow okay, people when, to come for meetings. Okay, when they are doing meetings. their own, uh, probably in the study room, you yes, see doing your Yes, own. I say that's Everybody. mommy's homework. So uh, <laughs> mommy has a suitcase of paperwork she needs to do, so your, I do your, that. Your lecturer is wicked. Uh, yes, yes. So they always say, say, oh, it's your boss. He's not being petty. And so I don't like, um, I do paperwork at home, but I don't bring meetings home. And uh, that's important to separate that and then give your kids that um, sense of having Having you having your presence, and I so I keep flying to and I'm like taking my flights back to back just so I'm home, yes. and then I spend as much as I can with them. Beautiful, beautiful. It's not uh, easy. We those of us who've been there and back, we know how it is. Yes, you know to join home yes. and then from bonding part. Yes, you know for you and your children, yes. it's not easy. You That's have to go for first of October close. You have to when they're doing the um, end of year party, they're you doing their class there. thing. You have to be there. They you have, have presentations in class. You have to make sure you're there. And do they also try to make you dance? Yes, children. yes. Mommy, can you dance this time? Yes, and Mommy, I never know all the things. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, you, and you must find um, that space in your time to, to give it to them because they grow up and then they're gone. That's it. So yes. my kids are relatively young; they're nine and seven. So I'm still doing like this is the time to really <laughs> catch them up with yes. it because if you don't, um, before you know it, whatever you've done in past, someone else would do it. Yes, and it could just be the negative. Word. Yes, and my son once said to me that, um, "Mommy, why don't you um, do the job of my friend's mom? She works in PTA. She's always in school, so you should leave that job you go to and come and work in PTA because the PTA moms are always in school." So I said to him, "I would apply. I would apply to Mr. Heaton and see if there's availability for me." <laughs> to work as PT. He said, okay, please ask them because I want you to work here. Leave that job. <laughs> All right. When we talk about women, for me, it's very important as a mom that we provide balanced diets. And it's not something I, I care to leave for the household. Yeah. You know, do you still find time to do special dishes for them? Yes. I, well, to the extent that I, I try to do as much as I can, but also to insist they don't eat a lot of, like, junk Mm -hmm. um, I don't particularly, I'm not a junk food person, yes. like naturally. So, in fact, for a while, my kids didn't know all of these things because I didn't, I'm, I'm not like a Coke Fanta soda person. I don't, I'm a water person. Mm -hmm. So, I usually don't have it in my house and it's usually for the guests. So, my kids for a long time didn't know how to drink all these things. They didn't know how to eat chocolates because I'm not a chocolate person. So, I'm not really a bread person. So, they didn't know much about all of that. Mm. So, and so that's, to a certain extent helped them because they didn't know all those things for, for quite a while. And I tried to say, oh no, your portions should be small, you must have fruits, you must have vegetables. So I uh, ensure that they do that. And also, constructive recreation is something I'm keen on. I, uh, my kids have tennis lessons, my son is in a football club, he goes for football practice and training. 
My other son is doing golf training. He does golf lessons. They do swimming. So it's important for kids to have constructive recreation because that is where, especially boys, they can vent out their energy. Mm -hmm. As they get to teenagers, it's good for them to have um, sports that they enjoy, that they do to sort of let out all their energy and steam. So I insist, like, they must do all their golf lesson, tennis, swimming, and um, um, football for my younger son. So... I, you know, I, the people that created the educational um, curriculum and said we must learn the three ways, the cognitive, uh, yeah. um, affective, and uh, the uh, psycho domain, mm. you know, of learning. They are not stupid because if, if you carry it all along, mm. it gives you the totality of yes. a human being. Mm. Okay, away from all that, I'd like to know for you, how do you recreate? Yeah. I read. That's what I do. I love to read. Read is uh, uh, what I. That relaxes me. So I read, and I've started exercising. I do Pilates. Oh. So that is something that um, I do for my own recreation. And I think that's it. I'm a bit of a boring person. Ah. Don't have much. <laughs> I haven't noticed. <laughs> don't, don't have uh, much in that. So 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 that's uh, my own form of um, relaxation. So uh, you're not boring at all. <laughs> But it's good. All right, uh, before I leave you, there are a lot of women who are out there, you know, watching us as we speak, you know, who seem to think that um, to make it, you must maybe follow the wrong path mm. because the country, the world itself is not fair, especially to women. But yes. here you are, mm. a woman, you've mm. stood out mm. and you just told us that you don't have fear mm. and you don't care about the name, yes. you know. Be the first or the last name, you don't care about it. Mm. I'd like you to learn a word to them, mm. you know, learn a voice to them. Let's mm. know, mm. you know, what it takes to actually stand out on your own. Yes, um, I think you should be committed, be steadfast, be focused. Um, whatever task you're giving, do it to the best of your ability. Always perform in any duty given to you. And as I say, because um, if you are being told to sweep a particular place, sweep it very well. Don't say that, oh, I don't want to sweep. I don't, sweeping is not my thing. Whatever you're given, do it to the best of your ability and you'll stand out. Um, I remember like last week I was telling a friend, um, through my career, I'm always being made to be secretary. So I used to take notes in like most meetings. I took notes and I do minutes, action points, you know, task list. I'm always doing that and that put me in positions and where places where um, so every time people are thinking of oh we need somebody to do this. Oh Hadisa will do a good job as a secretary. And then I pulled that. But at the beginning the secretary will be, when you're doing taking notes you'll be made to photocopy the agenda. You'll be made to do this. But always be efficient and professional about the task you're given. So even now when I'm CEO I'm still, I forget that I'm not the one to take the notes and I'm taking the notes and putting like, oh, owner to it whose task is this, what's the timeline I for, for, for <laughs> getting this job done. So um, anything that you're given, do it to the best of your ability. Be very professional. Um, refuse to um, allow them to pull you into that box they put every woman that woman has to be that person that sits in the corner does nothing is giggling and laughing is not able to get anything done um and just so refuse to allow to be put in that box be that girl or that lady that is able to take on the task that is serious responsible resourceful mm -hmm. um has initiative if if you're required to do a, by the time your boss comes back, you've done A, B, C. So he's able to rely on you and know that you can get things done and um, take things to, I'll say, the next level by bringing up ideas. Oh, when we've done this, why why can't we do that? So I've done this and that and that because Take I know that's what we time and have initiative. For some of us that are, um, uh, I'll say, blessed to be in certain positions, we must look ourselves as role models and um, pull the next young lady up, um, providing that ladder for other young people to come on and also showing them you can do it and you can do it better than me. I'm just a managing director of Nigerian Ports. Um, we're going to have a managing director of NMPC. We're going to we have a minister of finance that is female. We're going to so there are all of these things I keep saying to you know you'll do much more than we have done. Definitely everybody can if you stay focused. Thank you yeah. so much for coming on the show. You are indeed um, a gift to not just the females, but to Nigerians entirely, because uh, some of your people actually spoke out to me. They said the woman is a wow when she came. <laughs> we didn't believe in her. Um, we felt she was a woman. What can a woman do in a man's world and all that? But you came in and not only did you shut them up, but you actually gave them a new narrative, which 
they will want to sing forever if it's possible. <laughs> Thank you for representing the woman, you know, the way you've done. And for those of you who have been with all this uh, past few minutes, I wish time was still there, but I wanted to pick something. She just told you, please delete fear, delete the word impossible from your dictionary because God created man and he created woman alike. And uh, if you ask me, I think he took special time on the woman, <laughs> which is why we can do even greater things. All right, we'll be with you again next time with another exciting personality. The program is The Woman. I am Elizabeth. Bye for now.